Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the mesh analysis. What is mesh analysis? This mesh analysis is one of the basic technique used for finding current flowing through a loop in a network. So the mesh analysis is the one method, one technique to find the current flowing through a loop. Loop means closed circuit. In a closed circuit, the network is available in that network there are n number of closed circuit will be there in a closed circuit we can able to find what is the current flowing through the closed circuit current flowing through the loop right so mesh analysis is the technique to find the current flowing through a loop in a network right in that there are two methods available we can follow by equation method and matrix method first we will see the equation method by framing the equation by using mesh analysis we can frame the equation now consider this network there are two closed path available the supply voltage is v in there are four resistors available r1 r2 r3 and r4 this is one of the closed loop closed loop means it is the current flowing through the R1 and R2 this is one closed path this is another closed path R2 R3 and R4 is called a another closed path so we can take this is the loop 1 this this circuit this path is called a loop 1 the current flowing through the loop 1 is I1 this is considered loop 2 second loop current flowing through this loop is I2 so the supply voltage is available four resistors are connected based on the diagram we can take this is one of the closed loop or called a loop one first loop containing voltage source r1 and r2 so one of the closed loop loop one another loop also available here containing r2 r3 and r4 this loop is called loop two the current flowing through loop 1 is I1, current flowing through the loop 2 is I2. The current direction we can take any direction, but it is it is better to take the uniform direction. Both loop 1 and loop 2, the current flowing in the clockwise direction, same direction. You can take opposite direction also, but the equation will change accordingly. Here I taken the same direction for I1 and I2. Now we will apply the KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law to the loop 1. The explanation of KVL and KCL, Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law is explained in the separate video. The link is available in the description box, you can see that. What is Kirchhoff's voltage law and which are, what is Kirchhoff's current law. Now we are going to apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law to the loop 1. What is loop 1? This is loop 1. So this is the equation method. We need to frame the equation. So what is Kirchhoff's voltage law? Potential rise equal to potential drop. So this is the potential rise. Voltage we are applying. So this is a potential rise. So in loop 1 we have two resistors R1 and R2. So voltage will be dropped across R1 and R2. So this is called potential drop. So we applied voltage is potential rise. Voltage drop across R1 and R2 is called a potential drop. So according to K KBL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, potential rise equal to potential drop. So potential rise V equal to potential drop. What is the potential drop across this? V equal to IR. So I value is I1, R value is R1. So I1, R1. The potential drop across this resistor is I1, R1. Right, because I1 is flowing through resistor R1. Then we have one more resistor. What is the potential drop across R2? So this current, this R2 is connected between loop 1 and loop 2. It's a common. It's a common resistor connected between loop 1 and loop 2. Both I1 as well as I2 also flowing through the resistor R2 because it is connected in between loop 1 and 2. See the current direction, the I1 is flowing from top to bottom see the i2 i2 is flowing is this direction flowing from bottom to top so i1 is flowing from top to bottom i2 is flowing from bottom to top so 
two currents are flowing i1 as well as i2 but i1 is flowing top to bottom i2 is flowing bottom to top so i1 minus i2 i1 minus i2 is flowing through the resistor r2 because we consider the loop one so first we will consider i1 i1 minus i2 so current flowing through r2 is i1 minus i2 into r2 so this is a potential drop across r2 r2 is connected between loop 1 and 2 so both i1 and i2 is flowing so the net current flowing through the resistor r2 is i1 minus i2 because both are flowing in opposite direction this current is flowing this direction this current is flowing upward direction so potential rise v equal to potential drop i1 r1 plus potential drop across r2 i1 minus i2 into r2 now we'll go for a simplification v equal to i1 r1 multiply this r2 is multiplied so i1 r2 minus i2 r2 this i1 is available in both the term we take outside so v equal to i1 into r1 plus r2 minus r2 i2 so this we can take this is the equation number one right so based on the Kirchhoff's voltage law potential rise equal to potential drop potential rise is v potential drop across r1 is i1 r1 potential drop across r2 is i1 minus i2 into r2 because r2 is connected between loop 1 and loop 2 so both i1 and i2 is flowing but both the directions are opposite i1 is flowing downwards i2 is flowing upwards so i1 minus i2 current is flowing through r2 so after simplification we got this equation number one now we will apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law at a loop 2, second loop. In second loop, what are the elements available? R2, R3 and R4. The voltage source is not available here. Only the drops, potential drop. Potential rise is not available. So that it is equal to 0. Right? These are all potential drop equal to 0. So what are the potential drop? First we will take R2 same thing r2 connected between i loop 1 and 2 so both the currents are flowing so i1 minus i2 in the first case we are taken but in the second case while considering loop 2 we have to take i2 minus i1 because we are taking considering loop 2 right the reference is the loop 2 so i2 minus i1 while considering loop 1 i1 minus i2 because we consider loop 2 means loop 2 current i2 minus loop 1 current then potential drop across R3 is this I2 is flowing through R3. So I2 into R3. The potential drop across R4 is this I2 is flowing. Only I2 is flowing through R4. So R4 I2 that is equal to 0. The applied potential is 0. Right. So this is the potential drop across R2. Two currents are flowing. It's a potential drop across R3. Only I2 is flowing. Potential drop across R4 only I2 is flowing. In R2 both the currents are flowing. In I3, R3 only I2 is flowing. R4 only I2 is flowing. Now we will go for the simplification. R2, I2 multiply R2 inside. R2, I2 minus R2, I1 plus R3, I2 plus R4, I2 equal to 0. Right. So this term I1 is available. Minus I1, R2 all other remaining term i2 is common we take i2 outside so r2 plus r3 plus r4 equal to 0 so this term related to i1 this term related to i2 we take this equation number 2 now we have two equations equation 1 and 2 we need two currents i1 and i2 two parameters we need to find so two equations are available by solving this equation 1 and 2 we can easily able to find the current value i1 and i2 suppose if three currents are available we need to frame three equations in that in that automatically there are three loops available so we need to frame three equations so that we can find three currents in this problem only two loops available two currents are there so we framed two equation by solving these two equation we can able to find the value of i1 and i2 now the same problem we will we will see with matrix method how to frame the matrix 
for the same problem. Now we'll see this matrix method. The same problem is available. The two loops I R1, R2, R3, R4. This loop one, this is loop two. Current is in the loop one is I1, current in the loop two is I2. The voltage applied is B. So this is the potential rise. This R1, R2, R3, R4 are potential drop. Same thing we discuss equation method. Now we'll see the matrix method. In matrix method, the the current assigned should be a uniform, uniform direction. You should not assign in the opposite direction. Some procedure is followed while forming the matrix. So the current direction should be uniform in all the loop. Here two loops available. So the two both the loop the current is flowing in clockwise direction. We cannot take one current is clock, another current in anti-clockwise. Both the currents should be clockwise. But in equation method, you can take either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Automatically, the equation will change. The polarity in the equation will change. But in matrix method, we are following some procedure. So current direction should be uniform. Now we'll frame the matrix. What is the matrix we are forming? V equal to IR. This is the voltage matrix. How many voltages available? This V1. In the loop 1, loop 2. Then current matrix. How many currents available? Two current. I1, I2. Then resistor. Resistor matrix. So this is a format. V equal to IR. First we will see what is the R matrix. Two cross two matrix. The two loops available. So two cross two matrix. If three loops are available means three cross matrix. Three cross three matrix will be there. What is the resistor matrix? R11. R12, R21, R22. Other than diagonal, other elements are negative. If 3 cross 3 matrix means R11, R12, R13, like that, 3 cross 3 matrix will be there. So this is the diagonal. Other than diagonal, it should be negative. So this is not uh, negative, so positive only. So diagonal is positive other than diagonal negative. That's why we need to take the current direction as uniform. If current direction is uniform, automatically this, this law will be applied. Then what is R11? R11 means the resistor available in the first loop. What are the resistor available in the first loop? This is the first loop. R1 and R2. This is loop 1. What are the avail resistor available in loop 1? R1 and R2. So it is R1 plus R2. R11 is nothing but resistor, sum of resistors available in loop 1. So in the loop 1, the two resistors available. So R1 plus R2. What is R12? 12 means the resistor available, commonly available between loop 1 and loop 2. That's why it is 12. 1 1 means only first loop r 1 2 means the common resistor available between loop 1 and loop 2 what is the common resistor available between this loop 1 and loop 2 this r 2 this r 2 is connected between loop 1 and loop 2 r 2 is available in loop 1 as well as loop 2 so this r 2 is the common resistor between loop 1 and 2 so it is minus r 2 other than diagonal, we need to put negative. So minus R2. Then R is R21, the common resistor available between 2 and 1. Second loop to first loop. Second loop to first loop. That also same. So R2 only. This R2 is connected between loop 1 and 2 or loop 2, one, loop 2 to 1. So this R2 is the common resistor between 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. Then what is R22? R22 is the 2 2 means the total resistor available in the second loop. So this is the second loop. This is nothing but second loop. What are the resistor available in the second loop? R2, R3, R4. Right? So R22 means total resistor available in the second loop. The total resistor available in the second loop is R2 plus R3 plus R4. So R2, R3, R4. Right? So it is very easy to frame the matrix. R11 means total resistor available in loop 1. R22 means total resistor available in loop 2. 
R12 or R21 means the resistor available commonly available between loop 1 and 2. So we can frame the resistance matrix. What is current matrix? Only two currents available I1 and I2. What is voltage matrix V1? V1 is the voltage in the first loop V. V2 is the voltage available in the second loop voltage rise. But in the second loop the voltage source is not available so it is 0. If voltage source is available we can put otherwise in this diagram the voltage source is not available so it is 0. Now we framed the matrix voltage matrix current matrix and the this resistance matrix current matrix and voltage matrix is available. From that how will you find this current I1 and I2 for that we have separate formula is available. So this is the matrix we framed. So this is called a del. We take it as del. This value of value is del. Or this resistor matrix is taken as del. Given by the symbol del. In this resistance matrix, the first row is replaced by this voltage. Then it is called a delta 1. The first row of the del matrix is replaced by voltage voltage matrix then it is called del 1 suppose the second column is replaced by voltage voltage matrix that's called del 2 if it is 3 cross 3 matrix mean third third column will be replaced here only two columns available so the first column is replaced by voltage matrix second column as it is here first column as it is first column is given as it is the second column is replaced by voltage matrix, then it is delta 2. So the resistance matrix as it is taken as delta by replacing the first column with voltage source, voltage matrix is delta 1. Replacing the second column with voltage matrix is called delta 2. So we can find the del value, del value, del 1 and del 2. After finding this value, we can find I1 and I2. What is I1? Del 1 divided by del the value of del 1 this is a determinant we need to find the determinant value so del 1 by del will give the i1 value del 2 by del will give the i2 value right so it is compared to equation method this matrix method is easy we can easily frame this matrix we can easily calculate the del value del 1 and del 2 from that we can easily find the value of i1 and i2 but in equation method according to the direction automatically the equation negative or positive will automatically change it. but in matrix method we need to frame the uniform current direction then only we can apply the law other than diagonal other elements are negative that is applicable only when the current direction in all the loops are the same same direction so in this video we discuss about the mess analysis that is in a closed loop how to find the current there are two methods equation method and matrix method we we saw how to frame the equation how to frame the matrix the example problem for this mess analysis is available in the next video the link is available in the description box you can see that for the example of this mess analysis the problems both matrix method and equation method is available thank you